Okay, remember the check engine light? Yep, check engine light. I'm pretty positive it's because of the venting on the fuel tank. And so Earth Cruiser replaces the fuel tank, even though in the bodybuilder's guide it says do not change or do anything to the fuel tank, but they did keep the factory fuel sender and they keep the factory fuel filler pipe and they just kind of stick it out the back. And I did a previous video on this and I talked about how the check engine light went on as soon as I picked it up from Earth Cruiser within a few miles of leaving Earth Cruiser and uh, my entire way home. And Earth Cruiser chose not to do anything about it. So it was kind of my issue, even though they changed the fuel system out and the truck was brand new and modified by them. So I figured it probably had to do with the venting. When I finally did go buy a very expensive code reader to figure it out that's that's what it said although the codes aren't always really clear but that's more or less what it says something to do with the evaporative uh, fuel system so i'm pretty sure it's a vent and i figured it was because the fuel line wasn't really clamped down tight enough to the top of the fuel sender slash level sensor and the pump and all that whole assembly that they put back into the modified tank that they do so i tightened that up made sure the fitting was tight but also had a a loop that created a dip, a low spot. And so obviously if it fills with fuel, pressure won't really be able to get out, at least not as easily. So I figured that was part of the problem in that, and I could elevate that up. And the camper body on, I'd be able to elevate that up somewhat, and that would probably help it. Yeah, I think that was part of the problem, and I think probably that hose clamp was a little loose. I mean, I know it was, because I checked it and it was a little loose. And so I retightened that back up, and I'm sure that could add it to the, the contribution of there being a vacuum link, right, and that, because that's essentially what it is, a vacuum system. And so well, I think I figured it out. Let's go take a look, and I'll show you. I hope that my sharing of this is helpful to you and only intended to be helpful and as a temporary repair or fix. Make sure whatever you do, you're doing it safely, that it is, of course, meeting the regulatory requirements and also the manufacturer's requirements as well. And I'll show you what's a bummer. That check engine light. See that? It does not extinguish. See that check engine light is unfortunately still illuminated. It does not go on away. Okay, so this right here is the fuel filler hose that came with the Earth Cruiser, the, this truck when I bought it from Earth Cruiser. And it is a fuel rated hose. It's 5 16 internal diameter. They had one hose clamp on this, and I've since added a second. I just loosened this one up. There's not a lot of space on this, I'll call it a barb fitting for the two hose clamps here. But I'll show you what I think the problem is. Let me loosen these up. And you see I barely loosen that and this hose already gets loose, right? I barely, barely loosen this second one here. And see the hose just comes right off, right? And you notice on this vent here, there's no barb at all. It has this stop right here, right? That's actually not a stop. What this is, is uh, one of those um, special fittings, I forget what they're called, but these kinds of fittings right here, just like they're on all the rest, right? So this, you can't see here, but this clip goes over this ring right here. So they didn't replace it with probably what was the factory hose for the vent here. It looks just like this with a clip just like this, smaller diameter, but exactly the same. That would clip over this. So it'd clip right on. That's how they do in the factory. It's really qu quick, clips right on, locks on, and of course creates a airtight seal, right? Air and liquid tight, which of course it needs to be. And so that's what they did is they replaced with this different hose, which again is a fuel rated 5 16 but Again, it just slips right on and slips right off. Even the hose clamps don't really grab it because there's no barb there to grab. So, and they probably did that because when they replaced the fuel filler location, the factory hose was probably not long enough. And so they, instead of buying a longer one, um, or properly replacing it midstream. So I think that's my problem and why I got a vacuum link here. And this is probably always gonna be an issue. And until I get either the right fitting clip which with the right length, right, which is one option, or I somehow get the hose over this, which is pretty darn high. And I've tried pushing this over this, and I'm not able to get it. If I heat up this hose, I might be able to get it over here. And if I get over here and get a hose clamp down here, and one, a second one right here is a secondary, and then I'll have a, a solid airtight fitting. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. But also this hose doesn't really, it's barely long enough to reach where the fuel filler is, 
and not even enough to reach even that added length. So I am going to replace this hose with another fuel rated hose, heat it up, push it all the way down over there, put a hose clamp down here and a hose clamp here, and that should solve it. I am hoping. Let's try it and see. All right, so I got my fuel rated hose here. It is 5 16 It's about the best size. Probably could have went a tad smaller, but it really goes from like an 8 mil to a 6 mil, and that probably would have been too small. So, I'm going to try heating this up. I am doing it away from the fuel tank and the fuel vapors there. Not that those are likely going to explode with a little bit of heat. There's no spark here, but still just from a safety point of view and I don't have to be down there underneath the camper and all crammed in there to do that so we'll do it from right here but it's the best solution I can think of because the hose clamps and this diameter hose aren't working I could probably drop down to a smaller diameter then I'd have to of course go up to a bigger diameter because the fuel fillers have a bigger diameter so I'd have to have another fitting in there another potential leak point and I gotta wait for our fitting to come and all that I'd like to get this done Plus, of course, I'm smelling the fumes coming out of the gas tank because that's what gasoline does, right? It evaporates extremely easily. And this hose is probably rated to at least a couple hundred degrees, and I'm certainly not going to get it to that. Just enough to hopefully soften enough to get it around there. It's going to be tricky. This hose has a braiding in it, which really prevents it from collapsing and therefore also expanding. So I don't know if it's going to go over that piece. I highly doubt it. I really have nothing to pull it over. It's going to be merely a pushing, and I don't know if it's going to do it. Well, what do you know? I was able to push this hose, this warm, soft hose, over that clip mount. Look at that. She's on. I got her over this, this clip mount, which effectively is acting as a barb. I let it cool off a little bit after I slipped it on. It took a, lot of, a fair amount of pressure, but I was able to get it over there. So that's awesome. Again, just letting it cool just a little bit right now. And uh, that way it'll kind of suck back on there. Now I can get this other hose clamp on here as well, just on the other side of this barb. So the end really of this hose fitting. All right, now this is cooled down. See, this is even with those hose clamps not tightened. This hose is just stretching. It's not even coming off. So it is nicely sucked on there. Can't wait to get this closed up. I can still smell fuel vapors coming out of the end of this hose. <laughs> My nose is about six inches from the other end of it right now. Get these nice and tight. That looks fabulous. Okay, here we go. First start, first drive. And like... God, the check engine light went out. Check engine light went out. You know what that means? That means I solved that problem doing exactly what I thought it was if I was at Vent Hose. The Vent Hose that Earth Cruiser put in did not seal. Well, I fixed that. Yay! That's huge. Yahoo! No check engine light. Well, that's really good news, really good news. <sighs> All right, so it worked. So here's a tip for if and when you do replace the vent line from the fuel tank, this right here, replace it with a EPA compliant fuel rated hose. So heat it up a little bit safely because it is gasoline or if you have a diesel version, you don't have to be as concerned, but with gasoline, absolutely. Heat it up safely. So you don't overheat the hose, or you don't do it around where the fumes are to keep it safe. And get your you know, hose clamps and all prepared and everything, but back ways, and then push it on really hard and get it over that clip mount. And that'll act as a barb. And then of course, get a hose clamp on the other side of that barb on the back end, and also on the front end too, so you're really compressing it. I'm letting it cool off a little bit right now before I really clamp those down. So the hose will, as it cools, it'll obviously contract a little bit and go kind of seal around that barb. I'm testing it and it is tight. I can't pull it off, at least not without a fair amount of force. And it is actually has a bulb in the middle there over going over that connection point. So it looks really tight. It looks like it's kind of sucked itself on there now or is on there tight. So that's my tip of the day. And hopefully that will help you all keep from those check engine lights. 
that's everything. I'm probably going to cut that rest of the pass through through the camper here. Probably, uh, right there. Probably, uh, today. And that's going to be exciting. Cut it today, without a doubt. Yeah, no doubt. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening, and I'm super excited to have this check engine light resolved. And of course, these other things coming up, including cutting that pass through through. I certainly hope that this video was helpful to you. It only is intended to be a suggestion and certainly intended to be helpful to solve perhaps a problem that you may be having that's similar to what I had. So hope that helps. Certainly keep watching. I got a lot coming up in this DIY expedition camper build.